When you're the new kid on the block, you want people to like you for what you are on the inside. Back in 1996, Cadillac introduced the Katerra, their second attempt to change the brand's geriatric image, this time with a small sedan built in Germany by Opel. The Katerra was soon plagued by recalls, a horrible ad campaign, and, just like the embarrassment that was the Cimarron, the Katerra didn't look much different than much cheaper Chevrolets, leading to its end just five years later. This is the story of the Cadillac Katerra. This is my old car. Katerra, a whole new ride from the luxury leader. It's the Caddy that zigs. Thanks for the feedback from the poll I had on my community page to review the Katerra. And although I already gave a couple minutes to the Cimarron in my Chevy Cavalier episode, I may eventually have a complete episode for the Cimarron. The other Cadillacs in the poll, including the second place winner, the Eldorado, are still being considered for future episodes. Prior to the 1980s, Cadillac had been known for decades as a car whose main reason for existing was to flaunt the owner's wealth and status. It wasn't uncommon decades ago for people to use the term, the Cadillac of, when describing something that was the very best. This was especially true in the 1950s, which culminated in the 59 Eldorado, with the largest fins to ever endure in any car before or since, and Cadillacs continued to be large and opulent into the late 70s. But by the 80s, even Cadillac had to improve their car's fuel economy, and their answer was rebadging a Chevy Cavalier and expecting it to compete against small sports sedans from BMW and Mercedes. The result was arguably Cadillac's biggest flop before or since. So much so that their next biggest flop is one that many may have forgotten, possibly because its replacement finally got it right. More on that later. In the mid-90s, the average age of a Cadillac buyer was steadily increasing and consequently dying off. So they needed a car to draw in younger buyers who tended to prefer cars like the BMW 3 Series or the Mercedes C-Class. Those cars were designed and built in Germany and, as luck would have it, General Motors had similar sized cars also built in Germany through their Opel division. Specifically, they had the Opel Omega, and although it was classified in Europe as an executive car, at 188 inches long, it was two inches shorter than a late 90s Chevy Malibu, making it a good size for a compact car in America. And Cadillac didn't have to incur the expense of designing a new car from the ground up, a tactic they would employ again soon after with the Escalade. Although the Omega was the correct size that Cadillac needed, viewers of this video from Europe may better recognize the Omega as a typical choice for police cars for both Opel and Vauxhall. It was also marketed in South America as a Chevrolet, and in Australia as a Holden Commodore. America first saw the Katerra as a concept in 1994, then called the LSE. The production version was little changed from the concept, launching in late 1996 for the 1997 model year. The Katerra was assembled in Germany alongside the second generation Omega in Opel's Ruschelsheim factory. Although the Katerra had a different front and rear end than the Omega, if both cars were sitting side by side, it would have been quite obvious that they were the same car. But since the Omega was never imported to America, such a comparison, in theory, could never happen. A big advantage that the Cimarron didn't have. Katerra has full range traction control and speed sensitive steering to help you avoid all those clowns out there. However, despite the Omega's V platform not being shared with any American marketed GM car, it still looks similar to American GM cars, like the much cheaper Chevy Malibu. The Katerra's base price of just under $30,000, which is close to $50,000 today, had cloth seats and a cassette player as standard equipment. You had to pay extra for leather seats and a CD player. Luxury features that surprisingly were not standard. Katerra, the caddy that zigs. Although Cadillac clearly did not take a big risk in Katerra's styling or standard features, they did take an unusually big risk when it came to advertising. Although the Katerra was clearly aiming for a younger audience than the typical Cadillac buyer, the resulting ad campaign skewed even younger, almost as if it was geared towards children, thanks to a cartoon bird named Ziggy. In the ads, they showed the Cadillac emblem, complete with merlets, the small birds in the emblem that resemble ducks, and one of those merlets would transform into Ziggy, who got his name thanks to the ad's tagline, the caddy that zigs. It got especially weird when Cadillac introduced Cindy Crawford in the ads alongside Ziggy. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess who wanted a little more magic in her life. So she went to see the wizard and asked him what to do. Get a Katara, said the wizard. Clearly, Cindy was meant to appeal to the young male demographic, but having her hanging out with a cartoon bird was, well, like I said, weird. Later commercials wouldn't put as much focus on Ziggy, instead relegating him to the tagline at the end. However, by the end of the 1998 model year, Ziggy was mercifully killed off, and since then, Cadillac has never had another cartoon bird as a mascot. 
At least none that I know of. Has more horsepower than the 328i. Whoa, don't say that. By the way, if you are a fan of the CBS medical drama Chicago Hope, you may recall a character in the show named Dr. Lisa Katera, which sounds a lot like Lisa Katera. The show's producer, John Tinker, came up with the idea for the name from the commercials, and Cadillac became a sponsor for the show as a result. With around 25,000 units sold each in 1997 and 98, it fell on the low end of Cadillac's projected 20 to 40,000 units per year. The car's bland look and lack of Cadillac glitz likely was a factor, but it was also due to the car not living up to the caddy that zigs tagline. The sole engine choice was a 200 horsepower 3 liter V6, which had similar variations in the Saab 9000 and Saturn L series. Although 200 horsepower in the late 90s wasn't bad, it wasn't particularly well received in the Katera, where many complained the car was simply slow and dull to drive. It also didn't help that just after a few months of sales, road accidents started to increase, thanks to a faulty design in the timing belt tensioner pulley. And if you know anything about how timing belts work, if they fail, they can wreak havoc to the engine. As is typical with most failures like this, recalls didn't happen right away, with GM hoping the number of incidents would remain low. But they didn't, and instead increased so much that GM was forced to issue a recall. Thanks to the relatively new invention back then known as the World Wide Web, the bad press spread quickly. By 1999, sales dropped to only 15,000. A refresh was made for the 2000 model year, resulting in a new front and rear end. Sales increased to just over 17,000 for that year. This is a bold move for Cadillac. So the refresh didn't help all that much. After less than 10,000 sold for the 2001 model year, GM discontinued the Katera with little fanfare. The Opel Omega, however, lived on until 2003, and a variation of its platform continued with Holden in Australia for several more years including the export of the Pontiac GTO to America in 2004. Near the end of the Katera's run, GM began development of their new rear-wheel drive Sigma platform to replace the Katera. The result was the Cadillac CTS, which, along with the second-generation Escalade, introduced a radically different design philosophy for Cadillac. Gone was the jelly bean look of the Katera, replaced with lots of sharp angles and creases. The new cars got more attention thanks to the movie The Matrix Reloaded, which finally helped Cadillac attract a younger audience. Suddenly their cars were cool again, and the CTS, as well as the Escalade, would soon become Cadillac's best-selling models. And the Katera was now being treated like a distant memory to be forgotten. The Katera, like the Cimarron that preceded it, came from a time when GM often took the cheaper, less risky option when introducing a new car. By simply rebadging a different car that sold well, and expected the public would accept the higher price rebadge as a better car. The CTS broke from that tradition and was a bold move which paid off, and it remained in production even through GM's bankruptcy. Its successor, the CT5, likely won't be around much longer, thanks not just because of America's love for SUVs, but also since Cadillac is planning to go all electric by 2030. Oh, this place is adorable! And I'll bet there won't be any cartoon ducks around to remind buyers of what Cadillac used to be. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time.